Hi there. A couple of months back, I created a video where I explained what is many-to-many -many relationship, how to eliminate many-to-many -many relationship, and what can be the consequences of that one. After that, I got a lot of feedback on that video, and some of you have some concerns regarding that, which I'm going to address in today's video. So if you are also the one who worked on the data modeling, either on Power BI or using some another tool, and you also have some of the questions and concerns related to many-to-many -many relationship, then this video is for you. If you would like to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. My name is Ajay Kumar and you are watching me on PA Consulting Pro where we publish all the videos related to Microsoft Power BI, Microsoft Fabric and Microsoft Azure. So related to data and AI, we create different videos and you can watch it over here. Now, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you always stay updated with our latest videos and updates. Now, let's talk about many-to-many -many relationship issues and resolutions over here. It's something about me. So if you would like to know more, please pause your screen and you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Now, here's the agenda. First, we are going to discuss what are the relationships in Power BI or data modeling, let's say like that. Then we are going to discuss about what are the different kinds of relationships available. After that, you will get to know why to avoid many-to-many -many relationship. That means what can be the consequences if you're going to use many-to-many -many relationship. And at last, I'm going to let you know through a demo that how you can achieve it. Now, let's first understand what are the relationships in Power BI or in data modeling. Well, guys, relationships in data modeling is a way that we connect tables with each other and that's also going to help us that how we are actually getting the data from the relevant table for example you have two tables one is sales table another is product table and now you want to filter out your dimension which is a product table and then you want to get the relevant sales amount or sales quantity from that table in order to get that you have to apply a filter or slicer on the dimension table which is your product table and that product table should filter out your fact table where your all the quantities and the amounts are being stored but how these tables are connected they are connected through a relationship and that relationship also help us to propagate the filter and that is known as filter propagation there are the different concepts around it you can watch our other videos i'll provide you a link in the description section where you would get to know what is the filter propagation or filter context how does how does this work etc but in this video we are going to mainly focus on just on the relationships now the second part is what are the different kinds of relationships definitely there is not just one kind of relationship that we work because if we are working on the dimensional modeling then there is a fact table and there can be many dimension table also it can also happen there are the different schemas for example star schema then there is a snowflake schema and there can be the other schema which is known as constellation schema or the galaxy schema these different schemas are the different types the way we arrange the different tables over there and the relationships are the different kinds of relationships that how we are connecting them for example the very first relationship is known as one-to-one -one relationship and in the one-to-one -one relationship you exactly have one-to-one -one mapping between your dimension and your fact table also you can make the relationship from dimension to dimension or fact to fact so that's not a problem but you have to see that what is the ideal way to do that or how you can optimize the performance over there generally in microsoft power bi whenever we see one-to-one -one relationship then we merge the table so the best way is to merge the table however now on your screen you can see that there can be some exceptional scenarios where we would like to keep the one-on-one -on -one relationship for example if you are talking about matching the employee records to unique employee IDs in that case you can have this one-on-one -on -one relationship and now in rare scenarios such as linking the data between tables and the unique keys using column from the fact table as filters that case is the case where you are going to use one-to-one -one. But in my experience, we can simply merge that one-to-one -one relationship and that's going to help us out. Because whenever you do the data modeling, there are only two ways to do that. One is to flatten the table. That means you are denormalize your table and you will combine all the data in one single table. That means, for example, you have one big fact table and you have multiple dimension table, then you combine all the data into one. However, it has its own disadvantages. For example, a lot of data redundancy come into the picture. You are going to get the ambiguous result and maintaining those tables is super difficult. That's why we go for the dimensional molding where we put our numbers or let's say measures or the calculations in the fact table while relevant descriptive informations in our dimension tables. And then we can arrange them into different schemas such as star schema, snowflake schema, or constellation or galaxy schema. That's how we tackle these different situations. 
Now, the second type is one to many. So in this kind of relationship, basically, you have one side relationship on your dimension table, however, many side relationship on your fact table, which is the ideal relationship when you work on the Power BI data modeling or maybe in any other modeling case. And how does this work? For example, you have a product table and in product table, you have only name of the product. Customers are visiting your company portal or any other system. There they order one product, but one product can be ordered by multiple customers multiple times or one customer can also order the same product to multiple times. In that case, there would be many transactions over there. That's how your fact table contains the multiple transactions over there and one product can be related to them. So one product to many transactions. That's how this one to many relationship works. You can also take any other example as well in case of your banking transaction by employee name. Employee name would be in your dimension table and one employee can have multiple tra transactions in, in the banking system. So this is your one to many relationship. Next relationship is many to many, which is the core topic of this video. Many to many relationship occurs when you have many products and you also have the many transactions over there. I'll take an example of a class in a school. One student can be taught by many teachers and one teacher can taught many students. So that's how it's a many to many relationship. There can be any other relationships as well. There can be any other scenario as well where we can talk about many to many. But basically idea is that in your dimension table, you have duplicate rows over there or multiple rows that are related to the multiple rows over there. So you are gonna get, you know, multi. So in this scenario, you are gonna get many to many relationship. This is the one part that we are going to discuss through demo as well. Probably then you can get to know much more clarity on this topic. Now, moving forward, we are going to discuss about why you should avoid many to many relationship inside your data model. And it's not necessary that every time you have to avoid it in certain situations, you may like to keep it. But then there is a consequence in terms of performance, redundancy of the data, and you are also going to get the duplicate values. So on your screen right now, you can see there can be data ambiguity because of many to many relationship, then there can be performance issues. And also there can be issues related to duplication of the data. I'm going to explain you through our demo and then we are going to get to know exactly how the ambiguity can occur when we have a many to many relationship. Now let's first talk about how we can eliminate this many to many relationship. There are ways to eliminate many to many relationship. First, we can create a bridge table and that bridge table is going to have keys from both the tables and that's going to be the unique key and that's going to help you out to eliminate the many to many relationship, which I also explained in my previous video that how you can create a bridge table over there. Second would be the bridge key column. That means you can combine two columns or merge two columns into one column maybe using some separated comma or hyphen or something and then you can also create the same column into another table and then you can join them through a relationship that can also eliminate it so this is something which is also important you should keep in mind if you are going to ask me then i'll say the best way is to create a bridge table or you may have to merge the key column to create your own new column and that can be used to create a relationship between any two tables that's going to help you out now we are going to move to the demo part where I'm going to show you how you can exactly do that. I'm just going to take one example over here, but you can also try the different examples. Over here on my screen, now you can see that I have two tables, which I'm saying MTM brand and MTM sale. Basically, sale is your fact table, brand is your dimension table. MTM means many to many. That's what I'm returning over here. Now let's check the data inside that. If you are going to check the data over here, there's a brand name, Avon, and then corresponding to that, there's cycle type, which is mountain, hybrid, etc. Now, this is not the ideal case for creating a dimension table. I have just created inside one everything, but in ideal scenarios, you have more sophisticated ways to create your dimension table. So maybe you would like to create a separate table for these two cycle type and brand type. Now, there's a sale table as well, which is over here. So here I have the cycle type, outlet, brand, and amount. Now you must be wondering that how these are connected and how to eliminate many to many. Over here, if you would come in dimensional modeling uh, in this pane, which we call model view, then you would see that these are connected with cycle. So if I'm gonna connect, click on this, right now it's on brand, but I can also change it to cycle type. So now you can see that I have two relationship, one on cycle type, another is on brand and inactive relationship. Inactive relationships, you can also utilize them using text code. Now let's come back over here. 
we have to eliminate this relationship so how we can do i'll show you what i have done over here i went to my power query in the power query you can edit it once specifically you're working over here and you see that there's a brand and cycle type and i told you one way to do that is using merged key columns and then you can create a new column so what i have done over here i came to my this table which is brand so if you would like to simply take it you can also take it you can reference it or duplicate it and here you can simply go to the column and here you can create a new column over here so either you can create using the example or you can also use the custom column over here that's what i have done over here so in my otm which i'm calling one to many so i have created one combined key which i'm calling merge key and here you can see that how i have created this one simply i'm using merge column transformation over here then i'm using this hyphen as a separator and then my key name and then my column name over here that's what you have to do so i have done this over here and then same i have done in my uh sales table which is my fact table and if you don't know this transformation then definitely i request you to join our channel or join our one-on-one -on -one training programs where we are going to teach you everything from the basics i'm going to close this one over here and now i'm going to show you my another model where i have created again two new columns in the two different tables and then i'm going to join this using com key which is my new key column which is my new key column over here and then this relationship has been eliminated one to many now the main point is that what is the difference between many to many and one to many let's go further now let's say i just you know do this uh, on the sales one and i'm gonna come here and uh, let's check i'm gonna take this only one brand i won i'm just showing you for the filtering out here you would notice that total sales for this brand i won is the combination of these two and if i'm gonna combine it it's gonna be six plus ten plus 13 because i'm combining 2 5 6 plus 25 so it's around 54 right but what happens if i'm over here and i select this brand avon and you would find that over here my total sales amount is 217 which is not correct and it cannot be correct so i came here on one too many and i checked over here and the right amount is 54 then why is the problem if you will go there then there's a problem over here in many to many relationship there is no filter on brand so it's taking the whole count of cycle type because the active relationship over here is on the cycle type that's what is happening over here so you have to know that how the relationship is propagating and how it's working but then also you can try over here on cycle type if i'm gonna go for the hybrid and here my total is 143 here if i'll go on hybrid then you get the 143 which is the exact amount so be careful whenever you are applying the different slices or the filter over there and what kind of relationship is present or has been established inside your data model. Try to avoid many to many relationship. That's what my advice is to you. That's going to help you out to get the correct data, right data and with almost no and with no ambiguity. This is also going to help you to remove the duplicate values from your uh, data set. What do you think guys about it? Are you going to use it or do you still have any concern or feedback? If that's the case, please do let us know. If you are looking for any of the Microsoft Power BI, Microsoft Fabric training programs, please let us know. You can email us, connect at baconsultingpro.com. Not only that, in case you are looking for any consulting services, please do reach out to us. Till then, guys, keep learning, keep exploring, keep supporting us. And also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, share with your friends and colleagues, and give us a thumbs up if you really like this video. I'm going to see you in the next video.